Um, I hope you're all having a lovely day and today I'm going to show you my autumn and winter handmade wardrobe. Um, I just wanted to kick off by saying thank you to everybody who watched my last video and liked, subscribed, left lovely comments. It was really nice, thank you. So I was something I was very nervous about branching out into and um, yeah, I was really pleased with how it went. So I hope you enjoy this one too. So uh, here is my wardrobe. <laughs> it's not all mine. Um, if you're interested, these are IKEA Pax wardrobes. We've had them for about six or so years now. Um, yeah, we've got two doubles and a single on the end. My husband has the double there. I have this one. Um, that's storage. In fact, it has my sewing machines in it right now. So, um, here we go. So inside. Um, I kind of keep baskets up at the top with hats and gloves and bits and bobs in um, and shoes are down at the bottom which is a good job you can't see them because I just tend to throw them in. Um, on this side we've mostly got sort of ready to wear and jackets so I'm just going to leave that because that's not handmade and that's not what we're here for. Um, it's probably worth noting that I don't have an Instagram worthy wardrobe set up it's not perfect it's just a regular person's wardrobe so right so let's get into the garments so first up is this lovely sew over it tulip skirt um in this gorgeous 100 percent wool um this piece of wool was given to me by my grandma who bless her she's 92 now um and she got I think she got this when she was on holiday about 30 years ago. I'm not sure if this is the exact story, but I like it and I'm sticking with it. Um, and last year when she was having a bit of a clear out, she gave it to me and said, do you want to use that? So um, yeah, of course. <laughs> so I made this skirt, you can see it's pleated in the front. I've made this pattern before, I love it. Um, the only issue that I've got is that the zip is broken. Um, I used a zip that was an old one out of my stash. I think it was actually a vintage one. And uh, yeah, I should have just got a new one. I used it because it was a perfect colour match, but um, yeah, not good. And the inside is lined just in um, anti-static lining in like this wine colour, which matches the checks. So yeah, I will need to get that mended so I can wear it again. And what's really cute is it's got this little label um, from the mill where she bought it, which is cute, I like that. Okay, moving on, got some trousers, these are the sew over it carry trousers, um, they're one of the first things that I made in my stall, when I used to have time to sit and sew between customers, but I don't have time or space for that now. Um, this was a burgundy crepe that I had when I first opened. You can see it's got little sprays of flowers on. A bit Kathy Kingston-esque really. Um, but yeah, the carry pattern, carry trousers is a great pattern. Um, it's elasticated in the back and flat in the front. Um, with these little pleats, it's quite flattering. Um, I don't know how much more wear these will get now, between now and the spring. The more of a autumn piece that you can kind of wear in between. Because they are quite light. Um, but they will go nicely with a sweater. I think I could do that. Okay. Next up is not one, a bit twisted, but two Clio pinafore dresses. This is one of my favourite patterns and I recommend it to loads and loads of my customers, especially those that are beginning dressmaking because um, it's just really good fun to make and it's, it's got minimal fitting involved so you, can, you don't have to worry about tripping yourself up with fit issues, it's really wearable, it's straightforward to make. You, if you're an experienced sewer you could probably knock this out in a couple of hours, it's just, yeah, it's good fun. So this was the first one that I made and it's in a blue needle cord with uh, some dark grey top stitching and I use the prim dungaree buckles for that one. I love it. Um, just the patch pocket on the front. Had loads of wear. 
you can kind of layer it really well with with a uh, like long and short sleeve top so it gets worn all year round um, it's a shorter length so I'll wear it with leggings so that's nice and then last winter probably about this time last year I made this red one you can see that there um, this again is a needle cord but it's a lightweight uh, it's called soft cord um, I had it in stock last year but it's all sold out now um, and that's nice in this red shade, it's very Christmassy. I've got a lot of wear out of this last sort of November, December time on the stall. Um, and that's just got little buttons on instead of clips. And on this one, I did the patch pockets on the back. I don't think I'd do them again though. I don't think they're my kind of thing, but yeah, so that's two very useful staple wardrobe pieces. If you haven't made one, make a clear. Right. Um, next up are these McCall's culottes. They're huge, very swishy. Um, I'll link the pattern cover and number there for you because I can't remember what it is now. It was free on, I think it was Love Sewing Magazine a couple of months ago and yeah, I just really liked it. And it's a bit of a step out of my comfort zone. Culottes aren't something that I would usually wear or buy. so. It was a bit of a risk, but I really, really like them. Um, they've got a elasticated waist in the back, and you can see it's got three channels of elastic in, so that was quite nice, interesting to make. Pleats in the front, pockets, obviously, um, and this is um, an olive stretch crepe, which I don't think I have any left of, but I do think I've got some of the raspberry left in this crepe. Um, it's quite thick and it's like, it's almost got a spongy feel to it, it's hard to describe but it's weighty and it's got good movement, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, but these are extra comfy to wear, they're just elasticated and they look great with any number of tops. I'm not sure how much more I'm going to wear them be just because of the exposed ankles, it's a bit cold. Unless. Unless I could wear tights underneath them, maybe black boots or something. Maybe, I'll have to try it on and see how it looks. Um, okay, now we're into more snuggly, warm things. Um, this is a Simplicity sweater that I made last year. Um, I did a blatant copy of a customer's make, thank you Sue. <laughs> um, Sue made an amazing jumper well, it was exactly the same. I think this is Simplicity 921 or something like that. I'll Again, I'll try and pop a picture up for you. Um, but this is a fleece back sweatshirt in. So it's ordinary sweatshirt on the front and fluffy on the back. So it's extra snuggly. And the bottom is sort of tied in with a cotton twill tape and little cord stoppers. Um, the neck is kind of is folded over and it was a really interesting construction when I made this one I enjoyed it but it's a good little pattern um can I loop pocket it's a good pattern because it's got this and joggers on it as well I think just plain elasticated pants um and I think it's in adults and children's sizes so it's quite a good value little lounge set I don't really wear this out of the house it's just a sort of chuck it on and be cosy on a Sunday kind of thing, but I like it. Okay, now this one um, is possibly one of my most worn me maids in the last 12 months. It's a Helen's Closet Blackwood cardigan. If you're familiar with your indie patterns, the Blackwood's just notoriously good. Um, lovely long line cardigan, and this has got a hemband on the bottom. So it's a longer length and it's got pockets on the front. This is um, the cable knit jacquard jersey that I stock. Um, this was the, one of the first colourways that I got in last year. So I kind of made this as a sample and just because I wanted it. Um, it's really nice to sew with. Um, it's, kind, it's just kind of like a heavyweight jersey. It's a bit like working with a ponty. Um, but yeah, lovely, it washes great. It has bobbled a little over time, but you kind of expect that. It's 
being a pale colour, I wash it quite a bit because the cuffs can get a bit grubby. And But yeah, I throw it on with everything, with dresses, with jeans. It's just one of the perfect makes for this time of year. Absolutely love these cable knits. They're just great. Okay, um, next up is checking with these ties. This is my Stella hoodie that um, I made recently. This one's been on the grid quite recently. This is just a regular navy blue brush back sweatshirt in and I used a scrap of this Forever Autumn cotton jersey to uh, line the hood. I love it. And it's got these lovely rose gold card ends which sadly um, I believe are now discontinued by Prim so that's typical isn't it? But I am working on getting some new card ends so watch this space. Yeah just super staple. I reach for it a lot at the moment. I'm having a lot of days where I just have to go down to the market and do jobs and it's cold in there so I'm just throwing a nice hoodie and it goes great with the Stella joggers as well. Um, oh this is a good one. This is a SBCC patterns. That's right, is it? Yeah, SBCC. Uh, Brooklyn hoodie, I think it's called. Yeah, I think it is. I've had that pattern for a few years now and this is the second time I've made it. Um, I made this last year in this awesome leopard print soft sweat. Again, it was one of the very first things that I made when I opened the stall as a sample and I used to have it hanging on the outside of the stall and people would come past every day and try and buy the hoodie and I was like no I'm not selling you my hoodie oh but I'll, I'll give you my no <laughs> and I'm glad I didn't because I love it um yeah I wish I could get this fabric again it's like a very soft brushed sweatshirt it's just really cute quite young actually for me knocking on a bit now you know but yeah um and that's got coordinating draw card um little draw stoppers and and a zip so it was a good example of what you could make with all the products in my shop when I first opened it I like a hoodie it's got to be said um okay now this one you've seen recently this is my Billy sweatshirt um so the latest release from Tilly and the Buttons when we got the emails um the stockists get an email beforehand obviously to let you know of new patterns that are coming out I was like oh my goodness this one is going to be popular I have to make a sample of so here it is um this I can't remember which view this is off the top of my head I will put a picture in um it has the balloon sleeves so can you see the gathers Oof. and I've used red ribbon which coordinates. I think there's only a little bit of this left now, so I'm gonna have to get some more. So I use ribbon for the cuffs, the neckband, and for the waistband. Um, and the fabric is the Tis the Season lightweight sweatshirt in which unfortunately after I so posted this one, it, it's all sold out now. So I think that's the most I'll be getting of that for this year. But yeah, I love it. It's great. I'm not sure about it on yet. I think the big sleeves, puffy sleeves on me, they look fine, I know they look fine, but when I'm wearing them I feel a bit whoosh. So I would like to make this again in just a plain sleeve version, maybe a dress, we'll see. But it's a pattern that's just got so many possibilities. I think Tilly sort of makes amazing basics and yeah you won't be disappointed if you invest in that one but very festive and this is going to get quite a lot of wear. In the next few weeks when we reopen at work and Christmas season. That'd be good. Okay. Now this is quite an old one. We're into dresses now. Um, this is a sew over it heather dress in purple ponty roma. You might have seen this on my grid a couple of times. I love this dress. It's just comfy yet stylish and flattering. We don't really say that these days do we? but I like it on me, I feel good in it. Um, and obviously it's a great way of, to show off the purple ponty that I stock. It's getting a little bit worn now because it is, must be a good four years old now. But it's just something that I reach for again and again. Like a lot of people um, with the heather pattern, I've had a bit of trouble with the 
sleeves being tight. So if I was to make this again, I think I would revisit that. I have quite a bit of, what's the word? A large bicep, do they call it? <laughs> but um, I do work out a lot. I'm quite muscular in my biceps and shoulders. And then when I gain weight, I've put it on there as well. So I'm just sort of, er. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is a great dress and it's fabulous with tights and boots. It's proper comfy and that's what we like. Um, okay. Um, this one is sort of snuck from um, summer wardrobe into winter. This is a sew over at Penny. Um, I made this as a shop sample for when I opened the stall and it got quite a lot of attention on the mannequin. And it was there for ages and I made it in quite a hurry the night before I opened as you do and I didn't really let the hem drop it's a full circle skirt before I hung it up so by the time I got it home and I was able to wear it again um, the hem was a really weird shape so it was only this summer actually that I sorted that out and my lovely mum re-hemmed it for me um, but yeah Penny is a fantastic make I, I want to make this again um, this is a viscose, just a really lightweight viscose, just lovely. It's got one of my handmade labels in it actually, look, can you see? Um, but in the summer, it's the lightest, coolest thing you can wear and it just, it's soft and swishy. I love it. And it's just, it's just such a feminine thing. I think sew over it are the best for that with the feminine styles, that vintage sort of look. I'm not an over vintage vintage person but I really do love just classic styles and uh, yeah I like this one um, but it stayed in my wardrobe because I think with black tights and a black cardigan that can still get a bit more wear into the winter I'll let you know how that goes okay um, next up we've got a Tilly and the Buttons Stevie in a printed denim I haven't worn this one that much recently actually, I, I don't know why, but I should do, I tend to wear it with um, leggings, it's got the little tie back which I've untied which isn't helpful. Again this is a brilliant beginner's pattern, um, there's no sort of nasty, I say nasty, there's nothing fiddly like zips or buttonholes or anything like that because you've just got this tie closure and it's just a nice straightforward tunic dress so you don't get caught up in fitting so I quite often recommend that to people as a good place to start it's got a little patch pocket on it it's a good one that um okay now then this one this was my Christmas dress from two years ago now and to be quite honest I'm not sure it will actually fit anymore it might do but <laughs> It is a mashup of the bodice is the Colette Patterns Monetta and the skirt is the skirt off the Lady Skater dress. I can't remember who made the Lady Skater dress. I'll write it on when I remember. Um, but yeah, I made this a couple of years ago. It's got another one of my labels in the back. Um, really cute, really comfy. Elastic waistband. Just what you need on Christmas Day. This is a crushed velvet. I actually have a piece of this in the stall um, but it's not on the website so I need to get it on the website but there is a piece left but it's a beautiful colour. I love teal. My living room is teal so I can just blend in in this. Okay and then in the same fabric but a different colour is last year's Christmas dress. I told you I like velvet. Um, this is in like a wine shade. Uh, this is a sew over it Georgie dress um, which came out about this time last year I think the pattern was released. It's a lovely crossover. I think I was talking about it in my last video how I'm remaking it. So it's velvet on the outside, black viscose jersey on the inside, again elasticated in the waist, just very elegant, very comfortable. You might notice that I'm all about comfort. <laughs> Love that one. Okay. Um, oh, now this one's a few years old. This is a cake pattern. Is it cake? 
tiramisu dress. So this was a popular indie pattern a few years ago now, which my lovely friend Emma bought me as a gift actually. She bought me the pattern as a present. Um, and this is a jersey. I think it's a cotton jersey. But I bought it from um, Carol's Fabrics, which was a market stall in Barrow Market, where I am now, which was there before I was, but Carol retired before I opened. And I was very sad to see her go, because I used to like going there at dinner time uh, from work. I used to go and find, buy fabric that I didn't need, like we all do. <laughs> but I love this colour. It's I wear this loads, and it's really nice with like tights and brogues and um, handmade cardigans and all that kind of thing. So it's very flattering. Um, the good thing about this pattern as well is it um, it has like a no gape neckline. So if if you're busty, which I am, sometimes wrap dresses can be a problem if you move you gape. So and the Georgie dress is good for that as well. That's a top tip. Okay. Um, this one you will recognise, this is the Till It In The Buttons Clio. This has just come home with me actually from the stall and had a wash because I want to wear it now. <laughs> Sometimes I make things for the display and I can't wait to get them back home and wear them. I wasn't actually sure when I made this up whether it would suit me. Um, and I tried it on and was like, I really like that. So there it is, very straightforward. And again, another cracking beginner's pattern, especially if you're new to sewing knits or if you're new to dressmaking at all. Um, my friend Emma, who I mentioned with that pattern there, she started her sewing journey with this pattern and she made a gorgeous Cleo. So it just goes to show you don't have to do wovens first. You can go straight in with knits. Absolutely fine. Whoops. So yeah, look forward to wearing that one soon. Now, this one is a Colette Patterns Minetta dress, um, as I mentioned with the velvet. Um, I think this is a viscose jersey which I bought from Christine Barker Fabrics when she was there, um, which was a local fabric shop. She's now retired. I see all the fabric shop owners retired near us, which is why I opened. Um, but yeah, I like this. I'm not sure if it'll fit now, to be honest, but I'm not sure I want to get rid of it either. Put a little bit of weight on in the last few years, never mind. Um, yeah, yeah, it's an unusual print that one, I really like it. So, keep hold of that. This is another Georgie, but we've talked about that in the last thing and I still haven't fixed it, so we'll move swiftly on. Indigo. Unfinished. I don't know why I don't just finish it. But this was um, a viscose twill. Um, that I had, had in stock before. I don't have it in stock now. It's all sold out. But I think I've had two rolls of this. I don't think I finished it because I don't think I'm feeling it on the... I prefer my waist to be fitted. So I did start making waist ties for it and got distracted. Okay. Um, I'm nearly there now. This is unbuttoned. <laughs> This is New Look, is it 6651? This has been on my grid recently. I made this in the summer. I love this dress. This fabric is awesome. I still have it in stock and it's a viscose. And when you wash it, it doesn't need ironing. I literally pull it out, throw it on a hanger, let it dry and put it back in the wardrobe. So that's what we all need in our lives. Okay, get in there. This, last of the dresses I think, yeah this is the last of the dresses and it's very creased. Um, this is a, my mind's gone blank, South Bank sweater, that's it, South Bank sweater. I'll, I'll pop a link to all the patterns, the indie patterns below. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a dress, so it's a dress length version and it's got a little collar, a little turtleneck got self cuffs um, this was a sweatshirt in that I had in stock last year but supplier don't do it now I love this it's very warm very comfortable nice with black tights and boots it's got pockets pockets do sit a bit funny on the hip it's got to be said so if I made it again I might leave those off but yeah like that one okay and I think just to wrap things up is a Bertha cardigan 
Um, not a lot to say about that. I like it. It throws on easy. It's not particularly fitted. Um, obviously because it's a bat wing style. Still semi on sheer on it, but it is really comfy and very wearable. And layers are always handy. And then the last things I've got in here are a couple of hand knits, actually. So this is, doesn't look very good like that, a great big chunky brioche knit cardigan that I made last winter. Um, it was a test knit for um, the lovely Lily Kate of uh, yeah, Lily Kate Designs. Um, I think it's called Chill Day Cardigan. That was it, the Chill Day Cardigan. Yeah, it's got a belt. But it's huge. It's more of a round the house type situation. And finally, um, there's this mustard hand knit cardigan, which I actually spent about three years knitting <laughs> on and off. Um, it's, I think it's called Pom de Pan. Which I think is French for pine cone, if I'm wrong. Apple of the earth. Anyway, um, yep, yeah, and it's knitted up in Stylecraft double knitting. And it's just one of those things that I just always had on the go and then finally got it finished last Christmas. And it's got some lovely vintage buttons on it, which belonged to my husband's grand, his nan. So that's nice. Um, and then finally, finally, uh, the check pyjama bottoms that I was making last weekend, the one before, um, which I mentioned in my makes video. I wanted to make these as a sample for the stall, which is why they hung up, because I am a normal human being. I don't hang um, pyjamas in the wardrobe. They go in a drawer, but these are staying hung so they don't get creased. Um, this was a simplicity pattern. I'll link it for you, but I'll probably talk about that a bit more when I do a roundup of the things I made this autumn. So that's it, with the exception of, obviously that's my wardrobe, I don't keep everything in the wardrobe, I do have some drawers and I've got a lovely stack of tops, you can see here, uh, three of these are the Agnes t-shirt, uh, that's a Tilly and the Buttons Frankie top, um, is it a Frankie? I think so, that's another Tilly and the Buttons which I was wearing in my last video. I can't remember what it's called now. My mind's gone blank. Um, and the pink one there and this one are the Sew Over It Molly top, which is out of the City Break ebook, which I would wholly recommend buying because that's a really good book. Um, anyway, I've gone on long enough. I hope you enjoyed that. I've now got to tidy everything up and put it away. But uh, let me know if you've got any questions. I'll try and put links to as much as I can below. Um, I just hope you enjoyed that nosiness. Take care. I'll see you soon. Remember, if you enjoyed this, to um, like and subscribe. Not sure which side it is. Um, and I will see you very soon.